morning guys. Today we're going to work on uh, two specific sequences, the arithmetic sequence and the geometric sequence. Um, no, that's not arithmetic, it's arithmetic. I guess it's an adjective. We pronounce it arithmetic if we're talking about the noun. Uh, we would say arithmetic, but I don't know. That's, that's just the way we always pronounce it. So we're going to call it arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence. Uh, we talked for um, in the last lecture on the, about recursive and explicit formulas. Um, an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence are two sequences. Remember, a sequence is just a patterned set of numbers or an ordered set of numbers. So there's a specific pattern that we use and we call it arithmetic. If it's a different specific pattern we use, we'll call that one geometric. Uh, the arithmetic comes in when the difference between consecutive terms is a constant. It's a fancy math way of saying they're the same distance apart, so we've either added the same number every single time or subtracted the same number every time. So that's what we want to look at. Add or subtract same number every time. That's the indicator that we have a um, an arithmetic yeah right same the, uh, that we have an arithmetic sequence. We're adding or subtracting the same number of times. And that number, um, that constant distance, is called the common difference. Uh, common difference. Now, as far as your recursive and explicit formula, recursive, remember that one was pretty straightforward. Um, to get the nth term, I take the term before it and I perform the pattern. Well, if the pattern is add or subtract, same thing. So, a sub n minus 1, the previous term, plus my common difference. And if my pattern is subtracting, it's plus a negative number there. Remember, we don't like subtracting and dividing in math. We want to either add the opposite or multiply by reciprocal. And then we always state what the first term is. And remember, this is just a way to describe the pattern, tell us where we started. So start here, perform this pattern again and again and again. So uh, recursive formula. If you need a refresher on that, go back and look at the recursive and explicit formula um, lecture. Now. The explicit formula, remember we relate the, uh, each individual term to its position within the sequence. What's the third number doing? What's the fifth number? What's the tenth number? What's the thirteenth number? So instead of relating every number to the one right before it, as we did with recursive, we're going to relate it just to where it happens to fall in the list. So I can plug in that specific position and it will, the formula will generate the, um, the term in that position. So to get the nth term for an arithmetic sequence, it's a specific formula. It's going to be this formula every time. I'm going to take the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. First term plus common difference times n minus 1. <coughs> and we'll look in class about where this formula happens to come from. But that's the explicit formula every single time for if the pattern is adding or subtracting the same number every, single, uh, every time. Same one, this is the recursive formula every single time if we have an arithmetic. So we don't have to look and kind of guess and play around to figure these out. We see arithmetic, we see that add or subtract every single time. We know this is exactly what the recursive is going to look like. This is exactly what the explicit formula is going to look like. Okay, uh, give me a second, I'll get some examples up here where we can write the recursive and explicit formulas for a couple of arithmetic sequences. So here I have a couple of examples up of uh, arithmetic sequences. Uh, let's write the explicit and recursive formula for each of these. Uh, so first thing we want to do is identify that common difference. Let's verify that it's arithmetic. What's the pattern? Well, if we look at it, we can see we're adding 6 each time. So since we've added 6 each time, we have an um, arithmetic sequence. We're adding the same number every time. So let's start with our recursive formula. Recursive formula says to um, write a sub n equals a sub n minus 1. We relate it back to the previous term. And we just state what the pattern is. What was the pattern? The pattern was plus 6. So to get this number, I take the 1 right before it and add 6. There's a little subscript right here. And then I need to know where to start. So our starting point was at the number 4. So the first term was a 4 and then add 6 each time. Explicit formula, remember, was uh, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. First term plus the pattern times n minus 1. 
So to get the nth term, and it's always going to stay a sub n because we don't know what that happens to be. To get the nth term, I'm going to take the first term, which is 4, plus my pattern, which is 6, and just multiply that by n minus 1, position minus 1. So distribute, combine like terms, so a sub n equals, what's that, plus 6n minus 6, so we get 6n minus 2. So there's my recursive formula, there's my explicit formula. And the way explicit formula set works is if I ask for, say, a sub 3, if I want to know the third term, Third term is a sub 3, so I would just go 6 times 3 minus 2. Well, that's 18 minus 2, which is 16. 1, 2, third term is 16. If I wanted the 10th uh, term, the a sub 10, then I would do 6 times 10 minus 2. 60 minus 2 is 58. So. This notation right here, a sub 3, means third term. So if I saw something like a sub 12, that tells me I'm looking for the 12th term. So I would plug a 12 in. So there's the recursive formula for this sequence. There's the explicit formula. You have another sequence right here. Pause the lecture for a couple seconds or a couple moments. Uh, work this out and let's see how you guys do on writing the explicit and recursive formulas for that arithmetic sequence. Okay, hopefully you guys were able to get this, um, these two formulas written down. Let's see how you did. First thing we do is identify the pattern. So let's move a 3 over, or sorry, let's subtract 3 each time. Oh uh, my, getting away from this thing. Okay, 48 to 45 is subtract 3, to 42 is subtract 3, to 39 is subtract 3. So the pattern is subtract 3. The common difference, the D, is going to be subtract 3. So if we write our recursive formula out, the nth term is the previous term. With the pattern executed, the pattern is minus 3. So a sub n minus 1, minus 3. Remember, you've got to tell it where to start, so starting at 48. So a sub 1 equals 48. So start at 48, subtract 3 every time. There's our recursive formula. Explicit formula, we have our equation a sub n equals a1 plus d times n minus 1. First term plus the common difference times the position minus 1. And we just plug in. a sub n equals first term, 48, plus our pattern, which is subtract 3 times n minus 1, and distribute come on like this. Now, I know y'all wouldn't do this, but sometimes when you get in a hurry, your mind just starts trying to cram stuff together. Don't do 48 minus 3 right here. This 3 is a coefficient of the n minus 1. These are not like terms at the moment, so we can't combine their coefficients. So you can't do 48 minus 3 and then distribute the n minus 1. You've got to distribute. Remember, we multiply before we add or subtract because of order of operation. We've got to uh, distribute that negative 3 before we do anything with that 48. So 48 minus 3n plus 3. So a sub n equals negative 3n plus 51. So there is our recursive, sorry, our explicit formula. So just real quick, uh, you can do a check on it. If I said second term, a sub 2, you do negative 3 times 2 plus 51. And that's what, negative 6 plus 51 is 45. Was the second term 45? Yeah, it was. So there's just a little, you can check uh, to make sure you've done it correctly. Just plug your positions in and make sure they're matching up. All right, that's um, your recursive and explicit formulas for an arithmetic. One more thing I want to talk about with an arithmetic called arithmetic mean. And uh, give me a second, I'll get that information up here for you. So arithmetic mean is a relatively intuitive concept that we kind of use to figure out missing terms within a pattern or within a sequence, um, an arithmetic sequence specifically. 
And I say it's intuitive because just think about what's going on. We're adding the same thing again and again and again. So if I'm looking for a midpoint, because that's what arithmetic mean gives me, if I want the midpoint of two values, then I know I added to get to here and added the same thing to get to here. So if I just average those two together, add them up, divide by two, then that's going to give me that midpoint. Uh, because that's what our, how we calculate midpoints, you average them together. Uh, if for some reason you were wanting the common difference instead of the actual middle term, and you want to know the difference to get between all terms, you wouldn't average them up, you would find the distance and you would take the average distance. So you would take the total distance, you'd subtract them and divide by two. But that's a different thing, different task for a different day. Alright, uh, so let's look at this one. If I want to know what number is between 3 and 17, and that number is equally spaced because it had the same value added to the 3 and then to that number to get to 17. We're just going to average them together. So I'm just going to take 3 plus 17 divided by 2. So 20 over 2 is 10. So the missing term in this one is 10. And you just kind of do a quick double check. 3 plus 7 is 10. Plus 7 puts us at 17. 10 is the only number that could be, uh, have the same number added um, <clears throat> and get the, be able to create that pattern of 3 and then another number and then 17. So 10 is the one that's equally spaced between two of them. Well, on number 2 right here, what do you think we would do in a case where we're missing three terms? Well, we know if we average the two outside numbers or the two edge numbers, we're going to get the midpoint. It's the same thing here. Put together the 8 and the 24. So 8 plus 24. So find the midpoint of your two edge values. So that's what, 32 over 2, which is 16. And now you just created two smaller sets. Now what's the midpoint of 8 and 16? Well, 8 plus 16 over 2 is 24 over 2, which is 12. And now you really shouldn't even have to do the math because you should see the pattern. It's add 4, add 4, add 4 would put us at 20. Add 4 puts us at 24. But if you really want to, 16 plus 24 over 2, so 40 over 2 is 20. So we're really just trying to get enough values to figure out what the pattern is, what our common difference is, and we can execute that on that. But uh, that's arithmetic mean, good for finding missing values within an arithmetic sequence. And that's all really it for arithmetic sequences. Uh, give me a second, I'll get the information about geometric sequences up here when we started talking about that. So here we have our information about a geometric sequence. A uh, geometric sequence is different from an arithmetic sequence in that there's not a com common difference or constant difference with, or distance between them. Uh, it's the ratio between consecutive terms that's constant. And we'll call that the common ratio. That's a fancy math way of saying we're multiplying by the same number every time. Ratio meaning the rate of change, so we're multiplying by the same value every time. Even if it's a division problem, Say we were cutting every number by a third, sorry, dividing every number by three, we would think of it as multiplying every number by a third. So we need to get in our mind that division is multiplying by the reciprocal. Uh, so our recursive formula, again, just says to get any term, we take the previous term and execute the pattern. So the pattern um, for a geometric is multiplying by the common ratio, multiplying by R over tap. And then A1 is your first term. Uh, explicit formula, again, we don't have to do all this kind of guessing and playing around with the numbers. We have a formula that works every time for geometrics. And it says to get the nth term, we do the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1. Uh, so where n is your position. So if I wanted the fifth term, I'd plug in a 5 right there and it spit out what the fifth term of that specific sequence happens to be. So there's the explicit formula, which should look very, very familiar. And again, we'll look at in class where that comes from. But um, that's our exponential model. Exponential models where we multiply by the same thing uh, from one piece of the um, range to the next piece. So we multiply by the same thing again and again and again. Well, an exponential model is really the explicit for a geometric. A geometric sequence is an exponential function. Um, okay, so give me a second. I'll get some examples up here so we can uh, write explicit and recursive formulas for a geometric sequence. So here I have a couple of examples. I have two geometric sequences up here. Let's write the explicit and recursive formula for each one. So first let's confirm that it is geometric. Let's see, are we multiplying by the same thing every time? So to get from 1 to 2, 
times 2. 2 to 4 times 2, 4 to 8 times 2. So the pattern is multiplied by the same value every time. That's times 2. So that times 2 would be our common ratio. And we're going to use that in our explicit formula first. Nope, recursive formula first. So a sub n, to get the nth term, I take the previous term and multiply by the common ratio. And we started at 1. So the first term was 1. So start at 1, multiply every number by 2. Recursive formula. Explicit formula. Um, says we're going to, to get the nth term, I do a1 times the common ratio to n minus 1. So in this specific problem, a1 is 1. Common ratio is times 2 raised to the n minus 1. That's it. That's your explicit formula. Remember how explicit formula works by one of the third term? I'd plug in a 3, so 2 to the 3 minus 1 is 2 to the 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. Hey, if I want the third term, or sorry, fifth term, 5 minus 1 is 4, 2 to the 4th is 16, so the fifth term would be 16. So that's how we use explicit formula. Um, let's look at this one right here. First thing we do is confirm that it is, a, sorry, it is geometric, so we're multiplying by the same thing. Well, these numbers are getting smaller, okay, so a good indicator that the numbers are getting smaller is that it's not going to be a multiplication problem anymore, it's an odd division problem, right? So it can still be geometric um, if the numbers are getting smaller, it just can't be multiplying by a number bigger than one. We've got a compression going on. We're getting the numbers smaller and smaller and smaller. So uh, what would we be multiplying by? We have to be some number less than one. So what were we dividing by realistically? So to get from 48 to 12, we divided by four or multiplied by one fourth. To get from 12 to 3, we multiplied by 1 fourth, and 3 to 3 fourths, we multiplied by 1 fourth. Uh, another good little hint that you're dealing with um, a geometric is if the signs alternate, positive and negative, because then the only way that can happen is if you're multiplying by a negative number. So, some little things you can look out for to help you with determine if it's geometric or arithmetic, um, and you know, distinguish between them. So, we know that our common ratio is now one fourth, so let's set up our two formulas. Recursive uh, says to get the nth term, we do the previous term times um, the common ratio, and we state our first term, so a1 is equal to whatever that is, 48. Hopefully I'm not off the side of the screen over there. Uh, so there's our recursive formula, explicit, bring it a little bit back to the left. The nth term is the first term times the common ratio to n minus 1. So in this case, the nth term is 48. Common ratio is a fourth to the n minus 1. So uh, there's the explicit formula and the recursive formula for that specific uh, geometric sequence. Um, just like before, we'll talk about geometric mean. Um, so give me a second and I'll get the information for that up here. Very similar to arithmetic mean is geometric mean, uh, where we're finding using it to find the midpoint of two points in a geometric sequence. But instead of averaging them together, adding them up and dividing by two like we do with a arithmetic, we're going to do kind of the geometric equivalent of that, and that's multiplying and then taking the square root. Because think about what we're doing. If we are getting the midpoint, that means we executed this same multiplication problem twice. Well, if I multiply by something twice, I've squared it. So if I put them both together, I can get to what that squared value was. So when we multiply them and take their square root, it'll give us that midpoint in there. Uh, so we're going to use that idea of multiplying the two values and square rooting them to get the midpoint uh, to find the missing terms in each of these sequences. So on the first one here, if I want this midpoint here, 
It's the square root of the product. Square root of 80 times 20 gives me square root of 1600, which is 40. And then just kind of do a quick check. 80 times a half is 40, times a half is 20. It works out. 40 is the only number we could possibly put there that's equally spaced um, between uh, 80 and 20. Sorry. Yes. <coughs> From a multiplication standpoint. Well, if we look at this one right here, again, just like we looked at with the arithmetics, I want to put them together. When I put them together, I get the midpoint, and then I'll use that midpoint to get the other pieces. So. Uh, put together the 3 and 48. Uh, 3 times 48, 3, 4 is 120, 144. Square root of 144 is 12. And then we're going to use that 12 right here. So 3 times 12 is 36. So that's 6. So it's uh, plus or minus 6. And then again, we can execute the uh, geometric mean if we want to. Uh, 12 times 48 is 576, I believe. Right? 480 plus 96, yeah. 576, which is square root of that, is plus or minus 24. Or we could have just said 3 to 6 is multiplied by 2, so times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2. Uh, so we could get it by, once we figure out the first few, just executing the pattern to get the last one, or we can do the geometric mean again. Now, why is it a half square, uh, plus or minuses on there? Well, it's because we took the square root of a number, right? That didn't originally have a square root on it. Why does the 12 not have a plus or minus on it? Any ideas? Ponder on it for a second. I right, can these two be positive or negative, and this one only be positive. Good. It's because we know that this one came directly from those two right there. What's my possible pattern? My possible pattern is multiply by 2. Three times 2 is positive 6. Times 2 is positive 12. Times 2 is positive 24. Times 2 is positive 48. Or my pattern could be times negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative, two, or sorry, negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 2 would put us back to positive 12. Times negative 2, 12 and negative 2 is negative 24. And negative 24 times negative 2 would put us back to 48. So because we can alternate signs when we're multiplying by a negative sign, in geometrics, uh, every other term has to have the same sign, but consecutive terms can be opposite or they can be the same. So we get this plus or minus thing that we need to look for on consecutive terms while every other term, say these had both been negative, then that one would have had to, been, would have, had to have been a negative right there. All right, uh, that's it for arithmetic and geometric sequences. I know I throw a lot of stuff at you. Uh, we have the arithmetic mean, geometric mean, we have the recursive and explicit formulas for both of them. So make sure you've got them written down, took really good notes so you can reference those regularly. Um, and we'll work some problems and go over some things in class. Again, I'll go over with where those formulas actually come from when we get into class. Uh, and I will see you in class tomorrow, guys.